So they say you remember 10% of what you hear, 20% of what you see, 50% of what you touch, 60% of what you touch and see and hear, um, and the list goes on until you get to 90% of what you teach. This idea uh, is based in research and has been regurgitated through pop, popular uh, culture for the several decades. But the merit behind it is that the more integrated your educational experience, the better uh, you remember and understand the material. So this idea that if you have a more interactive educational experience, um, you'll have an improved learning and understanding of the content has been really difficult to implement in modern educational settings. The lecture style course works really well, um, but it doesn't really engage students. So how do we get students to be more interactive and engaged in their course material while also maintaining a system that is reliable, accountable, and can be standardized. What I'd like to suggest is that the recent developments in technology and online social media are providing the opportunity to connect this idea with modern education systems. Um, to actually, I guess, outline what this may look like, I'd like to use the example of the course I'm teaching right now at Community High. Uh, the idea behind this course started last year. I taught two semesters of neuroscience, and in one of my classes I had a student who was a sophomore in high school. He was at the same time taking Calc 3 with honors at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and was failing my course. And I, you know, 75% of the way through the semester, I was like, all right, level with me. I know you're capable of doing this. What are we missing? Um, and I said, you tell me what you want to learn and I'll figure out a way to grade it. And over the next two weeks, he learned uh, what a neural, artificial neural network was. He learned how to program one and then he made an inter uh, YouTube video that explained how to program one, uh, showed how he did it and what they're used for. And I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> this is so much cooler than anything I was trying to teach them. And, you know, I couldn't actually grade it because it was so, uh, you know, advanced. I actually had to have a PhD student at U of M grade it. <laughs> so, um, this idea, you know, I was like, wow, you know, if you really just kind of piggyback off of this intrinsic motivation that these students already have, you can potentially, you know, have a really enriched educational experience. You know, I feel like I understand artificial neural networks after seeing this thing that this high school kid taught me. And you know why? It's because he explained it at a high school level. It wasn't, you know, held up in this primary format that you need a fancy college education to actually understand. So this experience gave birth to the course that I'm currently teaching. It's called Connecting the Hemispheres, an Introduction to Neuroscience Through Web-Based Media. Essentially what we're doing is giving kids a foundation in neuroscience, letting them, you know, spark their interests in various subfields within the overall field. And then the focus of the course isn't quizzes, it's not tests, it's getting them to go do their own independent research under the guidance of the instructor and then create some sort of interactive educational content that communicates that. So instead of their learning being, um, the product of their learning being a grade on an exam, they're making an interactive educational product that makes a contribution to the online learning community. Now this is really special when you consider that neuroscience information is, like I said earlier, generally held up in a primary format. It's not academically or intellectually accessible to people who don't have fancy degrees, um, who haven't had the privilege of going through a good, you know, a good program. And honestly, neuroscience is removed from most K through 12 curriculums despite dominating a lot of the college scene. So this idea that having students create more secondary resources um, could potentially serve to bridge educational disparities if made publicly available in an online format. So 
this idea, um, of course, sounds really great theoretically. The class, of course, has its motivational pitfalls. I'm always afraid the students are dissenting at any given moment. Um, but all in all, I'm really shocked at how many online resources are just available. Um, our first assignment was a review of neuroscience history, and the kids programmed an interactive neuroscience timeline. So each individual's assignment made a contribution to a collective product that was then used, uh, then made available online as a public resource. Next, uh, we, used, we did a methodology booklet to explain different neuroscience methodologies and techniques. Um, this is something you need to understand if you're going to be reviewing primary literature, understanding why certain researchers use certain methods. Um, and the list goes on, right? That individual assignments and individual education can be reframed to serve a greater social purpose. This isn't specific to neuroscience. Um, it may be easier because neuroscience, you know, isn't that available um, in secondary format, but this can be applied to all subjects. And I guess the idea that I want to leave you with today is what if, instead of every student's learning was reflected in a score on an exam, but rather every classroom was working to create more educational resources. And what would that look like? What would the world look like if all these educational resources were available to everyone? Thank you. Thank you.